everyone welcome back to the channel so today i'll do a video basically comparing the superbase storage uh, function which if you don't know allows you to uh, basically store files in uh, what we call buckets which is a standard protocol that superbase has basically brought in into their um, their whole infrastructure uh, called s3 so uh, basically you can create a bucket store files into them and retrieve them later i'm gonna start by comparing the first factor that is important for me and for you i think which is the price uh, long term, uh, but also short term. And uh, after that, I'll show you the differences in usage um, that you could use. So let's get started with the pricing first. So for this example, I only took uh, three, basically three providers. So I started with um, the Superbase storage and then I used uh, Cloudflare R2 uh, as well as AWS S3. So things you need to understand is that some of these providers will use different metrics to calculate the costs, but most of them have the same basic one. So you'd add the, the dollar per gigs uh, stored by month. This is redundant because at the end of the day, you're charged by usage of the actual um, storage you're using. So if we start with this uh, criteria, we can see that Superbase storage actually is not that bad. It's under AWS S3, which is good. Um, but you can see that Cloudflare R2 beats them, like both of them, by about, you know, uh, half a cent. Um, so in this case, Cloudflare R2 would be better, but we cannot only look at this column. We would need to also look at the next column. So next one would be the dollar per million request uh, cost. So this is basically each time you do a request to either list or pull or use from a bucket a specific file or um, data. Uh, this would count as one request. So this is charged basically by the million request usually because it comes in volume and uh, usually people don't do like a low volume of those. Um, so if you look at Spooby Storage, basically they don't have uh, an actual um, dollar per million request cost. So this is good. The caveat is that Superbase, instead of uh, charging you per million requests, they charge you a um, basically a monthly fee. Uh, so if you're using Superbase Pro, you get 100 gigs. But then after that, um, like you get charged uh, egress that comes after. So there's no dollar per million request, but that doesn't mean it makes it better than the other. So just keep that in mind. So next up, we got Cloudflare R2. So their cost is uh, still 50 cent under AWS. So that's pretty much for the, million, the dollar per million request. And then we've got the dollar per gigabytes egress. So what is egress? Basically egress is when you take data from the servers of your provider and uh, export it to the internet. So let's say I have a dog image that I wanna show up on my uh, dog uh, catering um, website. Basically, each time I show this image, uh, let's say the image is 100 uh, megabytes, that's a big image, but still that, that's a good example. Well, it's gonna count as 100 megabytes um, times the dollar per egress, uh, per gigabyte egress cost. So let's say you get um, uh, like a uh, one gig egress per month, You're gonna, it's gonna cost you nine cents for both AWS S3 and Superbase storage. Now, one thing that I love about Cloudflare R2 is that there's no egress cost. So you can serve images as much as you want, images, any files, uh, and there's no cost. So this is great. Uh, this is a good way to basically scale a lot because if you need to serve a lot of content, this, is, this could be very great. Um, things like AWS S3 or Superbase storage will cost you a lot of money in the long run because if you have a big, um, like the storage will not be that much, but the egress is gonna be the big killer here. So knowing all that now, what's the second like criterion, right? Um, you, you've you learned that uh, those are the costs. Uh, it's gonna be tailored towards your needs. So are you prioritizing the dollar per gigabyte stored per month? That would be my case. Uh, like in this case, I find that Cloudflare R2 overall is the best for me. Um, 
but I'm going to show you a second factor that might influence your, um, your actual choice. So the next thing I would check is simply how the buckets work, right? So the way you serve data, the way you insert in a bucket, stuff like that, it's all different if, uh, based on different providers. So the reason Superbase might be a bit uh, costier than uh, things like Cloudflare R2 or AWS is that they've got the whole UI included in the same uh, basically project, right? So you got your database authentication, edge functions, real time, and then you got the storage here so you can see everything at the same time. Um, another thing that is great is that they offer a very simple um, uh, stor storage API basically with uh, the JavaScript uh, library that they have. So uh, the same way you would use uh, Superbase dot from and a specific table to fetch data in it, you can use their uh, API for doing all that custom stuff. So this is also another factor you need to take into account. Is it simpler for me to implement that using this? Probably yes. Is it cost effective for my use case? Maybe not because you can use many other NPM packages that will do exactly the same thing, but are just not from Superbase. So if you don't care about having, let's say your buckets on a different provider and stuff like that, I'd say go with your provider based on cost, reliability, and all those other factors. If you want to keep everything at the same price, no complications, stuff like that, I'd stay on the Superbase. So it's really your choice to decide what's best for you in terms of your use case. If you need more help with that, we can uh, have a conversation started. You can take the free 20 minute call um, in the description and it would be my pleasure to uh, help you uh, think about that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.